Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel. The weekend is finally here and what better way to start the weekend than talking about a Manchester United Academy graduate. Of course, Zidane Iqbal. I want to talk about his strengths and weaknesses, kind of his profile as a player and whether or not he could potentially be the solution to Eric Ten Hag's problem at the moment. Now, potentially the most important part of this kind of content is going to be at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned till the end to watch uh, to see that. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel. It would be a massive, massive help as we continue to try and grow as a community. However, enough of the waffle. Zidane Iqbal. How good is he? What does he bring? What would he bring? Etc, etc. But we'll start with a profile. 19 years old, recently uh, appearing for Iraq during the international break. Had a really good performance against Russia. And currently playing for the Manchester United youth team. Unlike players like Charlie Savage, he hasn't gone on loan. Instead, he has stayed at the club where he's having a pretty decent season. In terms of what is he in terms of a profile as a player, well, let me tell you, because this might be music to your ears as Manchester United fans and especially as regular viewers, viewers, viewers of this channel. Zidane Iqbal is a deep, deep line playmaker, first phase eight. Certainly that's how I would describe him. He's a player who's not a solo pivot, but in a double pivot or a midfield three where he's able to drop deep, get his team out of pressure and then move the ball forward. That's exactly what he wants to do. Well, guess what? It's exactly what Manchester United need. And it's actually kind of backed up in his heat map as well. We can see this heat map from the season in the EFL trophy. That those kind of two darker red areas, but particularly the, the higher one, the one on the can I point to this? I don't think I can. The deeper one on the pitch where it's red is kind of showing that he wants to drop deep and get the ball off the centre backs. And we know that this is exactly what Manchester United need. Someone that can come into these deeper areas, receive the ball with his back to play, and show the composure to turn past his man, show the dribbling ability, the low centre of gravity, standing at about five foot nine, he possesses that, the ability to drop a shoulder and go the other way. It's in terms of a profile, it's exactly what Manchester United need. Uh, we saw it in pre-season against uh, Liverpool in the friendlies, but also uh, during the Kind of pre-season after the World Cup before club football returned that little spell. Iqbal playing very, very well and kind of showing off these traits as a press-resistant midfielder. And like I said already, this is exactly what Manchester United need. But what I like about Iqbal is that he takes it one step further as well. So not only is he going to drop a shoulder and go past his man and then maybe release the ball, he is also capable of dribbling the ball forward as well. So he'll kind of beat his man in this area and then he's happy to carry the ball forward further up the pitch. And again, that's something which United could really do with. From here, he's also a very good passer as well. Whether it's kind of safe and sideways, his percentages are very good. With his pass completion often being well over 80%, so you know he is a player which keeps the ball well for his side, but also he can play the ball forward. Let's say his side are in more steadied possession, like something like this in this sort of shape. He is a player that can get the ball in these areas and move the ball forward through the lines, into the feet of someone like Rashford, Luke Shaw, but even Bruno Fernandes and Veghorst in more advanced areas in the middle. Iqbal is very good at getting the ball forward in these areas. Now, potentially an area where he could improve with his passing is his longer range passing. I think a weapon which Manchester United need to use more is the long switch out to Anthony. Iqbal probably isn't the player to come in and do that. I think in the future he probably will develop that part of his game. However, at the moment, you know, he doesn't attempt too many long passes and he doesn't complete too many of them either. Certainly percentage wise, it's about 53%, which is okay without being great. So he's a half decent long passer, but not his strength. However, like I said already, he is good at getting the ball moving forward. He can carry the ball forward with his dribbles, or he can pass the ball forward as well. I want to talk to you about an amazing tool to help you become a more composed and confident footballer. Be Your Best is football training in virtual reality. Developed by experts in Norway, it's the perfect way to improve cognitive performance, improving scanning, decision making and memory from anywhere in the world. In Be Your Best, you will go through over 800 scenarios recreated from professional games. A bit like this one from Luka Modric. You'll play from his point of view and receive feedback for your performance along the way. Be Your Best is used by athletes from all around the world, with Arsenal star Martin Odegaard using it in his return from injury. And it's also backed by science, with a recent 9-week study seeing players increase their scan rate by a staggering 28%. And now you can get 20% off your first month or year by using code HUB20 at checkout. So make sure to use beyourbest.com or use the link in the description. However, I think what I like more, and it might sound a little bit odd because I talk a lot about the need for a midfielder which can progress the ball forward. What I actually like more about Iqbal at times is that he doesn't always try and progress the ball. And sometimes he slows it down, he takes the extra touches and he actually is very mature in the way that he plays for his age. 
you know, we see a lot of United first teamers. We're talking Fred Sabitza, Eriksson, Bruno Fernandes. They all look to quickly get the ball moving forward, and at times that's very useful. However, sometimes you need a player to take an extra few touches on the ball, slow it down, look forward, yes, but if the pass isn't on, to then come sideways, cycle the ball, and then move again into a different position. And that's something which Iqbal actually does very, very well. So whilst, you know, his ball progressing would be useful to the side, I actually think it would be this ability to slow the play down a little bit, which actually might be more useful. Of course, on top of the fact that he is very press resistant. Now, if United were to implement a player in their side which does slow the play down a little bit in the way that Iqbal does, it would allow the team to kind of have more sustained attacks and more dangerous possession, allowing the players to get forward and suffocate the opposition in the ways that Manchester City have over the past few seasons, but how Arsenal are this year as well. And this is another area where Iqbal would contribute. Not only is he going to keep the ball for his side, but also in the final third, he can provide a bit of creativity. 1.7 key passes so far in the EFL trophy uh, this season, 1.7 per 90 I should say. So that shows that he does have something to contribute in the final third. He's never exactly going to be like a goal scoring midfielder or even a massively creative one or a massive creative outlet compared to someone like Bruno Fernandes. However, he is still very good on the ball and he will occasionally kind of chip in with this, this sort of creativity I guess in the final third. It isn't his main strength by any means. However, you know, having a player which can occasionally do it might be what United need because they already have players like Bruno Fernandes, Anthony, Rashford, Shaw, who are very dangerous going forward. I think maybe United do need this eight, which doesn't actually always push forward into the final third. You know, we've often seen Eriksen this season playing a little bit deeper at times. That's a role which I think Iqbal could play. Now, as I've said already, these are all things which United need, and actually, it's what United are crying out for. They need a press-resistant first-phase player. Iqbal is that. They need a player which can progress the ball with his carrying. Iqbal is that. They need a player which can slow down the tempo. Iqbal is that. They need a player which can pass forward through the lines. Again, Iqbal is that, and he also contributes to an extent in the final third as well. So the question is, if all of that is true, why haven't... I've been screaming his name on the AJ Analysis channel saying, this guy needs to be playing. Well, the question is for me over pure quality initially. So, he profile-wise, he does the basics of what you would want from this type of midfielder, but it's about the level he does it to. You know, this isn't, he's kind of a similar profile to someone like uh, Frankie de Jong or Thiago at Liverpool, that sort of profile. However, just because he has a similar profile to them, it doesn't mean he's got the ability of them or the level or the ceiling of them. And, you know, I think most would agree that at the moment he doesn't. Could he have the potential to get to that level? Maybe, we just don't know. That's all about his development. However, right now, is he the quality that United need? And that's where it's a little bit difficult, because it's also all about the environment. Now, some people will say, you know, at the moment, Manchester United are way too chaotic to bring in a 19-year-old midfielder to try and control the tempo. And I completely understand the logic behind that, because at the moment, Manchester United are very transitional. That could make it really, really difficult for Iqbal to kind of show off his talent, what his game is, that doesn't fit the current system. However, the flip argument of that is yes, maybe he doesn't fit the current system, but could he be the player which changes the system? That player which slows it down a little bit, which shows the press resistance in the first phase. It's, it's really difficult to gauge and it's what Ten Hag needs to try and figure out. Is it a case of if we put him in now, he's going to be overwhelmed by the play style? Or is it a case of, if we put him in now, he will actually change the play style and allow Ten Hag's side to play much more in the way which we expect, controlling the ball, playing out from the back and sustaining pressure? That's where the question mark is, and that's what I was saying at the start of the video. That's the most important point. The quality, I, th I think he's a good player. Profile, I think it's all there what United need. But is it the right environment for him at the moment? I don't have the answer to that question, unfortunately, at the moment. It's something which I'm trying to figure out myself. It's the same with um, Kobe Mainu. Another player who is a very similar profile to what United need at the moment. The question is, is it the right environment? But it's a really difficult thing to figure out because, like I said already, there's a chance it's the wrong environment and it could go horribly wrong, gets completely overwhelmed, gets overran. It's really bad for his confidence, which is therefore really bad for his development. However, there's also the chance that he is exactly the player which kind of changes how United are playing. He stops United constantly getting pressed so high because he has that press resistance. He has that ball retention in the middle third, but also that progressive ability. Really difficult one to weigh up, and that's why today is a bit of a short video, you know. It's, we're not going to massively go into this because he is a young player, which simply we haven't seen anywhere near enough of at this level in terms of competitively. Not sure that we've seen him at all this season. So, there isn't tons to talk about. However, I just want to give you this brief idea. The question is... 
Could he be the solution to what Ten Hag wants and needs in the midfield? I think he could. I think he could. But I'm not saying he is. So maybe that's where you guys can help me out in the comment section down below. Do you think it is time that we see someone like Iqbal moved into the midfield? Because at the moment, Casemiro is suspended a lot and we know he isn't that kind of player. Anyway, Eriksen is out injured. Sabitzer has proven not to be the press resistant player that is needed. Uh, McTominay we know isn't. Fred isn't. Bruno Fernandes has been dropped deeper to try and provide it. It's not ideal. It moves him out of position. And also he isn't the most press resistant player either. So is it time that someone like Iqbal is given a chance? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, apart from that though, I think that's all I've got to say for today's video. Like I said, a slightly shorter one. We've seen the profile, we've seen what he's good at, we've seen where he can improve with his long passing. Now it's over to you guys, so let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.